Hello, Not Manly here, and we're playing Purple Space Program, where Bob Kerman has gotten over his stage fright, and he is taking off toward the Oceans of Eve, or what passes for Oceans on Eve, and he's doing two things today. He's doing a part test splash down at Eve, and he's also going to leave that part there as a beacon for us to find out where the Purple Space Center is in relation to the rest of the planet, and he's separate. Oh. Oh, and it looks like the really thick atmosphere of Eve has torn Bob's rocket apart. Fortunately, it looks like he's safe, though his parachute is intact. And when he lands safely, he'll be able to use those new science instruments to get a little more science. And hopefully get us some better rocket parts so we can do something a little better. Looks like he's a little happy when the things... Ooh. Hey, Bob, you got a bit of Jebediah in there when you hear things blowing up. Ooh, you love the fireworks. <laughs> wonder what your brother thinks of that. Anyway, with a little bit of science he got from that, we can't quite get the automation parts, but we can get our radial decouplers, which we need to build a proper rocket, and the able liquid fuel engine. That is part of the EVE optimized engines. The EVE optimized engines are optimized for the really high pressures on Eve's surface, so we can actually get some decent thrust at the expense of specific impulse. And with these new technologies, let's see if we can improve on our rocket. We don't need this stock decoupler anymore. We can do a proper radial decoupler. Let's get our larger fuel tanks while we're here. There we go. We'll get those and we'll get... Where is it? There it is, the Able Liquid Fuel Engine, which is like the Swivel Liquid Fuel Engine on Kerbin, but again gives us better thrust on EVE. Where's our radial de- there they are, the radial decouplers. Hopefully this will give us a cleaner separation when we separate those hammer solid rocket boosters. There we go. Check your staging. We'll fire the ABLE engine once we separate out the solid boosters. And who are we going to send out on our new death trap? Hmm. Let's see if we can tune that. Yeah. Oh, do we have enough? We got to watch our part count. We've only got like 30 parts to be able to use in this vehicle assembly building. So we got to watch that real careful. We haven't gotten over it yet. Parachute. The parachute's right there on the cap on the command pod. You know, why can't it figure out that there's a parachute already attached? <laughs> and who we're going to send? I think we actually need the steady hand of Jebediah Kerman for this one. Yes, we'll send Jeb out on the death trap 1.2. So, we'll join Jeb on the launch pad. Come on, why aren't we hitting launch? There we go, hit launch, launch it. And Jebediah Kerman is waiting on the launch pad. We are going to get our stack decoupler out to the ocean for a part test and to leave as a beacon to find out where the purple space center is on Eve. Come on Jeb, oh come on Jeb, there we go. And up, 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 up we go. There we go, Jeb. We must have built a heavy rocket. And the steady hand of Jebediah Kerman guides this craft up into the air and hopefully out to the ocean. And we're almost at separation. Here we go, Jeb. Oh, man. Not even the mighty Jebediah Kerman could keep this craft in one piece long enough to reach the ocean. Well, Jeb, just pull that parachute and get back here safely and we'll try again. And here we go, Jeb is trying again. We've taken away the solid rocket boosters. But the able liquid fuel engine has more than enough power to get off the launch pad on Eve. Come on, Jeb. Now we got a little better control, but look at that pressure. That's just how thick the atmosphere is on Eve, where going just as slow as the speed of sound it makes immense amounts of dynamic pressure. No wonder these craft came apart in mid-flight. 
but this one's holding together in one piece. And as we drift over the coast, Jeb will separate out this... Well, well that's one way of separating out the boost. <laughs> that's one way of separating away that engine. And with Jeb safely over the water, he pulls on the chutes and descends gently. That thick atmosphere allows for a very gentle landing in the oceans of Eve. And... Touchdown! There we go! It's a gentle landing. I keep hearing that these oceans are made of some material called Explodium. So we have to be careful, no ignition sources. Fortunately, there's no oxygen in Eve's atmosphere to catch fire. It makes me wonder why they call this stuff Explodium in the first place. While he's out here, he can at least get some signs. He can get a crew report, he can get a temperature scan and a pressure scan and an EVA report. Eve's Eve's poles. <laughs> we got a do we only have like two biomes here on Eve? Like we've got we got landed and we got splashed down, but they're all Eve's poles. We've actually made the ocean and now we've tested our decoupler and we've completed that contract and we've left our part in the ocean close to the purple space center so we can find out where the purple space center is i think spinning my goodness there's something weird about the water and eve that makes these things spin come on get that away from there oh oh, oh. hopefully jeb didn't get a little tummy ache doing that there we go we got the part test down. And when we bring Jeb back, we'll have a little bit more science. And now we'll have a better idea of where we are. That's where we are. And look at where all those contracts are, though. They're, we're here. We're way over here, and the contracts are way over... I wonder if that was because of that. That was where we got that. We broke 100 kilometers distance, or whatever that was. Those are way too far for us to do any good trying to get out there. So, let's try something a little more productive. We'll try to get some more science. We're going to build a rover. We don't even have wheels yet. That's how early this particular space program is. We're not going to use a fuel tank. Why we use a fuel tank? We got a service bay. In the service bay, we can put in some batteries, we can put in some mystery goo, we can put in some more science. Now you might think, how can you build a rover with just two command pods in a service bay? Well, the command pods have reaction wheels. Reaction wheels allow us to turn rockets when they're in flight. But they also turn on their own, if that's all they are. And two command pods together should be able to be able to turn this craft around so it can kind of roll around hopefully when we send bob in there he's not going to get seasick in there trying to gather a science for us come on bob and there he goes that immense gravity on eve playing havoc with bob's brain but he's brave enough he may not like it, but if he can do this, we'll be able to get enough science to get some wheels, maybe. Well, after a bit of work, we did manage to get enough science to get some automation. So we've got the Stay Putnik. Now, aircraft. We'd like to be able to build aircraft, but there's no oxygen to use these jet engines on EVE. So let's go to the next tier of rocket parts, where we have the LVT-40 Atom. The Atom is the EVE edition of the Reliant rocket engine from Kerbin. Very high thrust, even higher thrust on EVE. And here we go. Now we've actually got all of our science reports. We know where we are. And now we know where our reports went. There we go. When we turn EVE off, we get all of our reports. And with a little bit of extra science grinding, we were actually able to get better fuel tanks and the all-important fuel ducts that allow us to do asparagus staging on EVE. Asparagus staging is the most efficient way to build a rocket in Purple Space Program and in Kerbal Space Program. 
So with this, we're able to send Jebediah Kerman. We'll try to send him up to the upper reaches of Eve's atmosphere. And those, listen to those Adam engines roar. Oh, Jebediah. With asparagus staging, we can fire all five engines at once and then drop engines as their tanks run out of fuel. That way we're maximizing our thrust, maximizing our ascent, and maximizing our fuel use. And those rockets just come apart on separation again, slamming hard into that thick atmosphere of Eve. Look at that immense pressure. And again, the next stage separates out, and they just disintegrate. But look, we're already 20 kilometers up, and we haven't even used half of our fuel. Come on, Jeb. How high can you climb with this rocket? Can you get to space? Come on, Jeb. 48, 50, 53. We got to get to 90. Come on, Jeb. Come on, Jeb. 79, 80, 81, 82. Come on. Just a little more. 90! We made it! We made it to space! 100 kilometers up! That is our apoapsis. If we can get up there, then we'll have made space with a little bit of fuel to spare. Come on, Jeb. Hold her steady. Come on, Jeb. You're almost in space. Almost. Almost. Come on. 78. Climbing 79, 80, get ready with that crew report. We need science from space. We need that crew report from space. Come on. 84, 85. We're breaking altitude records. We're breaking speed records. Come on, Jeb. It's a little higher. 89, 90. We're in space. Get the crew report. Get the crew report. Jeb, Jeb, get the crew report. Yes, we know we've made our contracts. We know we, we know we got this high. We know we reached space. Get the crew report. We need the science. Come on, Jeb! Jeb! Oh my... Hope we put an antenna on this craft. Maybe Jeb could actually hear us from down there. Hey! Jeb, we need the science! We need better parts! Come on! Well, at least we reached 100,000 km... 100 kilometers up. <laughs> See if we can slow our descent a little bit. Because Eve's atmosphere is really... Th oh! Oh, jeez. <laughs> Eve's atmosphere is really thick, and if we hit it too hard, we could melt. Come on, Jeb. Come back safe. Come on, Jeb. You know, it would have helped if we actually managed to bring some more science up there. And Jeb, why didn't you get the crew report? Oh my goodness, we're going to have to send you up there again. But at least you know, oh wow, right at 30 kilometers we hit a brick wall of atmosphere and we slow right down to less than Mach 1. But at least we know we're safe. We can deploy this parachute anytime. Come on Jeb. Oh, thank you Jeb. <laughs> Giving us a heart attack over at Mission Control. Come on Jeb. Come on back safe. We want you to get back up there and get some more science this time. We need science. And the chute opens up. Look at that gorgeous sun above Eve shining through the parachute. Yes, Jebediah Kerman is a proud purple on the planet Eve, the first to reach space. But that's not good enough. We need science. We're sending him back up there. Now we've sacrificed two of our fins for two science instruments. We've only got 30 pots to work with, so we're going to try this again. Hopefully Jeb's steady hand will keep her up there with only just two fins instead of four. And the stages just disintegrate in this immense pressure. But look, the pressures aren't quite as high getting up there. We've already cleared 25 kilometers and we're not having a problem with the pressures at all. Look at those exhaust plumes expand as he gets higher up. And look at the apoapsis climb. We're already at Mach 4 and climbing. And we hit 90 and we're not going to go any higher. We want the fuels to be able to slow our descent before we come back into Eve's really thick atmosphere. Hopefully the Kerbal Killer 2 doesn't actually kill Kerbals. Come on, get the science this time. At 90k, get the science, get the- there we go, get the science, we need the science, keep, keep, keep. Go Jeb, now we can turn those off, now we've got the science. 
we've actually made this trip worthwhile up into space. And back down we come. Because really the gravity at only 100 kilometers up is about the same as it is on the surface. Come on, Jeb. Come back nice and safe. As I was about to say, the gravity just 100 kilometers up is about the same as it is on the surface, but to go to orbit, you actually have to go sideways really fast. That's how you avoid that. And we're going to hit that brick wall of an atmosphere. How are we going to get into orbit though? We don't have enough funds to build a larger vehicle assembly building, but maybe we can save on some parts. We might not need those fuel dots. Uh, Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2 lets us set up tank priorities. Maybe we'll be able to do asparagus-like staging and save on four parts and get some more fuel tanks and rockets on there. But until then, we've got Jebediah returning safely from the edge of space and with a small bounty of science for which to expand our space program. And Jeb is less than a kilometer up, and he's going to land safe. Congratulations, Jebediah, thrill seeker extraordinaire, and the first purple in space. Oh, come on, the suspense is killing me. Almost, 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 and... Touchdown! A first purple in space, also the first to return from space. And we earned a um, lousy 33 science. <laughs> we need to work on this. There's no biomes in purple space program at all. It's just splashed down and landed. Maybe Gregor X Mun has some work to do yet. Maybe we also either need to move the space center out to where those contracts are, or we need to move the contracts closer to the purple space center. But until that happens, we'll just get to bask in our accomplishments. We actually managed to reach space from the hardest place in the Kerbal Solar System. Until we try again, I'm not manly, fly safe.